Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at how you can import custom ship models into Space Engine so you can uh, expand the available options of spaceships in the program and create add-ons for others to download if you so choose. So we're going to be using as an example model today a uh, Nova class starship from Star Trek, the uh, source and author of which are uh, on the screen right now. So let's jump into it. Right here we've got our model all set up in our 3D modeling program. Uh, in this case I'm using Autodesk Maya, uh, but many of you will probably want to use maybe something like Blender, which is a good free open source cross-platform option. Um, others of you might have experience with or access to something like 3ds Max, but whatever program you choose it'll have all the options that we need in this case. So the first thing we're going to want to do after we have our model set up in the program is we're going to want to combine the meshes. If your, uh, if your object, if your model has multiple component meshes to it, we need to combine them all together. Uh, this one, for example, did. Um, now to save a little bit of time, I've already done that, but the way you do that is you'll select everything and then in, in Maya, under the Polygon menu, you'd go to Mesh Combine. Um, it would be a different procedure um, if you're using a different program, but it would be the same thing. An option would be somewhere to do it. Then once you've combined it, you will click on it. And now we need to triangulate the mesh. Because the issue we have right now is that not all of the faces on the on the model are triangles and Space Engine as of version 0 0.980 needs all these um, all the faces to be triangles right now some are quadrilaterals there might even be some n-gons in there I'm not sure but they're definitely not all triangles so we're gonna go to mesh and triangulate and we'll let it chew on that for a few seconds and again whichever 3d program you're using We'll have an option for that somewhere. There we go. Now we've triangulated our mesh. And we're all set. So now we can go to export it. I will export it just to the same directory that all the source files are in. It's important to note that you need to export as OBJ. So we've selected OBJ as our file type. Our options over here look fine. So we'll name our file Tutorial Nova and export it. Great. Now that it's been exported successfully, we'll look at our folder here and we've got our tutorialnova.obj and tutorialnova.mtl. The, both of these files are very important. The MTL describes how the different materials and texture assignments on the uh, on the model are set up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our Space Engine folder. We're going to go to Add-ons, and here I've created a new folder. But you could do this in the root if you wanted to. But we're going to do it in a new folder. We're going to create two new folders: one called Models, one called Textures. And within each of those, create another new folder called Spacecraft. Now inside of our Models Spacecraft folder, we're going to copy our OBJ file. And inside of our Textures Spacecraft folder, we're going to copy our MTL file and all of our textures. Now we've got that all set. Going back to the models, the next thing we have to do is set up our ship scheme file, our SSS file. Um, the best way to do this is just take one from an existing ship, uh, preferably another single module ship, like uh, the default shuttle or Skylon vessel, uh, you can find those in the um, in the the 
one of the default pack files. So I've already copied one out. We can paste it here. We got shuttle.sss. The very first thing we need to do is rename it. So we will rename it to tutorial nova.sss. Then we will open it. You can open it in any text editor. But I would recommend something like Notepad++. It gives you context highlighting and all that. Oops. Come on. There we go. Sorry, I had an older version loaded up. So now we just have to change all the information here. Uh, first thing we can do is get rid of all of these uh, camera lines because they won't be relevant to our new model. We can change albedo to something like 0.07. We can change mass to whatever we want, or you can leave it alone. It's up to you. Name we can change to Nova class. Class is Starship Pack. It can, can be Star Trek. And Faction can be Federation. Length is whatever we'll say. It's 180 meters. All the offsets to zero. And again, mass, um, what your mass will be will depend on whether or not you want to be able to use aerodynamics with your ship. If you're going to use aerodynamics and be able to fly it like a shuttle in the atmosphere, you want your mass to be close to this 18,000 kilogram value. You don't want it to be much smaller than, say, 12,000 kilograms. You don't want it to be much larger than, you know, 30 to or so thousand kilograms um, because that affects the way that it flies that's an unfortunate reality of space engine at the moment is uh, changing your mass like you're literally just changing your mass in the aerodynamic model but everything else like uh, you know wing area control surface area whatever else they're all the same so if you make your ship more massive it means it has less drag less lift less everything um, so I would only recommend changing the mass uh, significantly if you're not using aerodynamics. In this case, we can turn aerodynamics off, and we can say that the mass is, you know, uh, you know, 75 million kilograms, because why not? And we can set up our engine thrusts. Hyperdrive or warp drive will be set to true. We'll also want to set our warp drive speed. Warp boost log, we can set that to 8. And we'll want to set this here, the path to the our, our module here. We want that to be um, the, the name of our ship and the path that we have installed to. Everything before this quotation mark here, it's assumed to be in the path of models slash spacecraft slash, you know, whatever. So anything that's, if you have a subfolder within the spacecraft folder, you'll put its name here. If you don't, and it's, and the model is within, directly within that spacecraft folder, then you just put the name of the model file. The OBJ file goes here. So tutorial nova and ignore the fact that it says cfg for the moment uh, what we want is the exact same path of the opj but it does need to say cfg here but you don't need to worry about that little discrepancy right now so now that we've got everything looking like we want it to we can just go ahead and save All right, so we've got that going. Everything looks good. So we can go now and launch Space Engine. And we'll just wait a moment for it to start up. There we go. All right, we're loading this planet in. And what we'll do now is we will 
spawn the ship you can use this button here on the left side toolbar or you can use control F3 go to build Star Trek Federation Nova class build you'll notice that the loading icon will be turning for a few seconds while it uh, loads the model in there we go it might also help to pause time and now we'll press uh, Shift F to bind the camera to the ship. We'll center it, and then we'll look at it. So there we go, and we can see that although the silhouette looks good, it's all black, and that's not exactly what we want. We want it to have some color. We want it to have the textures and the lights and everything that it's supposed to have. There's another step that we have to do if we want to have all that working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close Space Engine, and we're going to go back to that Textures folder, and you'll notice there's a new file here called TutorialNova.sml. It's a Space Engine material file. So we'll open that up, and these are all the materials for our model. And there's some more configuration that needs to be done here. So anything that has a, uh, a texture, a diffuse texture that you want to be visible, you have to change the di diffuse color to 1. And if there's a specular map, you'll generally want the specular color to also be 1. And we can change the specular power for this model to 38, something like that and there's a, a, a bug with the current version where it'll add this like the name of the model in front of the name of the texture for some reason so we can just highlight that control H replace with nothing and then replace it in all the individual instances we've got that taken care of now um, so for our impulse engine we need uh, something for this engine to use to glow so we need just a, a white texture for the glow and we can modify the color for that in the material so we got we'll uh, just point to our white pixel texture so in this map and that will be white na dot star and that dot star means uh, it'll automatically look for um, a given file type uh, you know whatever file type it can use and it will give priority to different file types in order so if you've only got one type of file you can just use that or if you've got a bunch of different files with the same name but different extensions and you want to use one of them in particular then you would just uh, add the extension there like PNG JPEG DDS whatever it is alright so we've got our white NA and then we'll go to in this bright and we'll say 2.0. We also need to add our MS color. MS color. And it's our impulse engine. We'll make it pure red. So that'll be 1, 0, 0. Then for our glass, we want it to be transparent. So we've got our transparent texture, but we need to tell the engine what to do with that. The, the alpha channel information in that transparent texture. So we go to diff map alpha transp there we go and that tells it to use the alpha channel as transparency so that'll make our windows transparent now for the hull we need to add our emissive map so emiss map nov emiss dot star emiss bright 1.0 and then this doesn't really matter because we don't have a specular texture here and since we've got the same texture for diffuse and emiss on this material we can just copy paste and then change diff to emiss emiss bright 1.0 all right, everything looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and save this. All right, just double checking everything. Yeah, that all looks good to me. 
So now that we've done that, we're going to launch Space Engine again. And we'll see that this time we have all of our textures. Everything looks good. Everything that needs to be reflecting is reflecting. Everything that needs to be lit up is lit up. And that looks pretty darn good, if you ask me. We can go in close and make sure that those interiors look as they should, and they seem to. Yep, everything looks good. So, now let's uh, just make sure that we can fly it properly. We'll press 4 here to take control of it. And, uh-oh, one thing we notice is that we're not lined up properly. So what we're going to do now is go into the ship editor. We'll press Shift F2 edit module, reset rotation, alright so now it's pointing at us so we'll rotate it 180 degrees around the y-axis and now it's pointing away from us, it's upright, everything looks great, click the save button, close it. And now it's oriented the right way, it's exactly the way we want it to be, and everything looks good. So let's just double check that we can fly it properly. So let's resume time. Increase our engine thrust. Increase time flow. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Alright, so we'll cut our engines. then we can just close out by trying to go to another star. We'll just test out the warp drive. So we will hyper jump to this place. And we'll fast forward through this trajectory adjustment. All right, where did our ship go? Ah, there it is. We're now flying happily through interstellar space. And everything seems to be working nicely. Wonderful. All right, enough of that. We will drop out of warp. And that's everything. All right, now we've got our ship working perfectly in Space Engine. And you can have fun flying it around. You can package it as an add-on for others to use. And uh, that's all we need to do. Alright, thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any uh, questions, comments, leave them below in the comment section. And until next time, enjoy exploring the universe.